In this video, we're going to walk through migrating build logic from Groovy to Kotlin in your Gradle build scripts. This project is a multi-module Gradle project. All the modules are defined here in settings.gradle. And each of the individual modules has a build.gradle file written in Groovy. We're going to walk through converting each of these build.gradle files into Kotlin files step by step. There are several approaches to the migration. One of the approaches is to use valid Kotlin inside your Groovy files before you turn it into a Kotlin file. This way you keep your files compiling all the time and only at the last minute do you turn them into Kotlin files. Groovy, for example, supports single quotes on your strings. Kotlin uses double quotes. However, Groovy also supports double quotes. So the first thing we can do is turn all our single quotes into double quotes. We can use IntelliJ Ideas replace in files for this. We're going to search for single quotes, replace them with double quotes, and we'll use a file mask to say we only really care about build.gradle files. When we have the results, we can click through and have a preview of what this change is going to look like. Because these changes are limited to just the build.gradle file, I'm fairly confident this isn't going to break anything, so I'm going to go ahead and just replace all of these instances. You can see the changes are here in all of the build.gradle files for the individual modules. I can go ahead and double check which changes were made and see if they look sane before making any commits. But one thing I really should do before committing any changes is load the Gradle changes and make sure that the changes we made still work inside IntelliJ IDEA. And then we can rebuild our project and make sure we've made no breaking changes. Once we know that this build passes and that there are no errors, we can double check the changes that we made in the files if we want to. And then we can write a helpful commit message and commit just these changes. We're going to make these changes incrementally step by step so we can roll things back if something goes wrong. Groovy allows you to omit parentheses when you're invoking a function. However, Kotlin needs you to put those parentheses in. We can go through and manually replace them using IntelliJ IDEA if we want to, but we can also create a regular expression to find all the places where we're going to need to add parentheses. In this case, let's use the plugin ID. Let's find anything that, that has ID followed by quotes and replace it with the same thing, but inside parentheses. Make sure you've got regex turned on, otherwise it's not going to work properly. You can preview what it's going to look like in the window at the bottom here. You can see it's going to take the, the argument and put a parentheses around it. Once we've made the change, this will apply to all of our build files. Again, we need to reload these Gradle changes and we can rebuild the project just to make sure everything's working as we expect. In actual fact, specifically for Gradle plugins, we actually don't even need the, the ID. But here we got an idea of how to make this change. We're going to need to make this change in a number of places in the, the build files. For example, our dependencies, we also need to wrap these inside parentheses too. So we can build up a similar regular expression in our find and replace. This time we're going to look for anything which starts with test, whether it's test implementation or test runtime only. And we're going to replace this with, um, with the same thing, but with the argument in parentheses. Again, make sure you've got regular expressions turned on and replace all of the places where we found this. This should have made changes to all of the test dependencies. Next up, we can make changes to, for example, all of our implementation dependencies. It's the same kind of pattern. We've only got three in our project. We can make these changes safely. And then we can do the same thing for our API dependencies. Reload these Gradle changes and rebuild the project just to make sure everything works the way we expect it to. Now we can commit these changes knowing that this hasn't broken anything in our project.
So far we've made all of these changes to our build.gradle files. We can actually go through and check all of our files. We can open them all up and check them, give them a quick look over to make sure they look more or less how we expect them to be. We will find that we've missed one of our Gradle files, which is settings.gradle. We could either have included this in the, in the file name pattern when we were doing our search and replace, or we can just go through and make the changes manually here. If we'd used star.gradle, then this file would also have been included when we did our find and replace across all of our files. Alternatively, we can just go in and manually edit this file. Reload the Gradle project, rebuild the project, make sure everything works, but these changes weren't particularly destructive, so everything should work correctly. Then we can commit these changes. There are a few more changes we can make to our groovy build files to make them Kotlin ready. One of the things we'll need to do is we will need to change the way we declare the test task. We can again do a replace in files, have a look for test with a curly bracket, and we need to replace this with tasks.test instead. I'm not going to do a regular expression here because this is a straight up find and replace. We can check these changes and then commit them. Another change between the way that you can declare things in Groovy versus the way you have to declare them in Kotlin is the way that we declare something like the main class. In Groovy, you can use an equals, but in Kotlin, you're going to need to set this value. So we'll look for anything which has main class equals something, again, a regular expression and we will replace this with main class dot set with the same values inside parentheses. You could write a more general regular expression to find everywhere that uses equals and replace it with set, but probably you want to just do a quick check to make sure you're making the, the change that you expect to make. Now we have this build file open. I can see that we've missed somewhere where we need to add parentheses where Groovy allows us to not have parentheses, but Kotlin needs us to have parentheses. When we're declaring a dependency on a project, we need to wrap that project also inside parentheses. So we can search for anywhere where we are declaring the project and replace that with the same thing, but inside parentheses. We'll once again do a quick check to make sure everything builds correctly and commit this change too. You see, we're doing it in small incremental changes. We do want to make sure everything still works exactly the way we expect in small steps before we do anything major to our build system. Here we can see another example where we are using equals to assign something. In Kotlin, this also needs to be a, a set call. So we can look for something which matches this pattern and replace it with a similar thing, but set. In actual fact, when I went through this build file later on, I realized that this line isn't needed at all in my particular project. However, it is a good example of the types of patterns you're going to see in your build files that do need changing if you're going to migrate them to Kotlin. At this point in my particular project, I've made all the changes that I can make to my Groovy files before I turn them into Kotlin files. They're still valid Groovy files, but as soon as I turn them into Kotlin files, they will become also valid Kotlin files. So I can take one of these build files, rename it so that it has the Kotlin extension, reload the Gradle changes so that IntelliJ IDEA loads the Kotlin build script, Make sure it reloads it correctly and there are no errors. Here we can see this particular module, this particular subproject does still appear in the Gradle tool window. There are no errors and everything seems fine. 
The way IntelliJ IDEA renders the file is slightly different because now it's Kotlin script and not Groovy. You'll get what you expect from Kotlin scripts. You'll get code suggestions and code completion. Now I've done one file. I'm going to go through trying to rename the simplest build files first to make sure that these are all working correctly. Reload each of my changes after I've changed it to a Kotlin file and make sure the project is still correctly imported by IntelliJ IDEA and still correctly builds. I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA to import and build the, the application. Of course, you can also go to the terminal and do a, a build from the command line too, just to make sure everything's working the way that you expect it to. Finally, I've renamed and re-imported most of my Gradle build files. You can see that the version control system sees that I've renamed it rather than seeing it as a new file. We can commit these changes because everything seems to work correctly. There is one build file we didn't rename just yet. Let's do that now. In this build file, there will be some changes we need to make after converting it into a Kotlin file. So let's rename it. Let's re-import it. And here you get to see what happens if there are any errors in your Kotlin build scripts. Here we can see that the array is not being declared correctly because it's being declared as a groovy array, not as a Kotlin array. So we need to make this change to, to this build file. I could do a straight up replace in files to make sure I've caught it everywhere. In my case, it's actually only in one file, but let's show what it looks like in case you have it in more than one of your build files. Of course, now my Gradle files are gradle.kts files. That's why I couldn't find anything. Now I can see that it's found an array that it wants to convert to the Kotlin syntax instead. So I can replace that. I will re-import the changes and now it builds correctly. And there are no more problems with this file. And I can commit these changes. Now all of my build files are Kotlin build files. So we walked through an example of a real project turning the Groovy build scripts into Kotlin build scripts. We saw some of the steps that we can take in order to make sure that this migration is fairly seamless and fairly painless. There is Gradle documentation on how to do this. This is the documentation I used in order to figure out which things I needed to change. This also suggests making the changes to the Groovy files before you turn them into Kotlin files. I highly recommend that if you're going to go through this process, you take a look at this documentation and figure out your strategy for migrating your build scripts. Thanks for watching.